and two boxes of autumn shadows. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, for free. But that is on the assumption that you're also buying all the kiss and makeup styling sets, okay? Then we've got ourselves a deal. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> that was Tweedy. We finally got Temperatures Department Stores. How good is that? Very good. Well done. I like your eyeshadow. Why, thank you. It's one of our Desert Storm range. Sold 4,000 units last year. <laughs> what were you talking to David about? Oh, we've clinched another sale. Hey, everything's going to be all right, you know. It's a big adjustment for both of us, Alf. I know neither of us planned this. After all the times we said we didn't want to have children, who expected this to happen? It is a surprise. I'm just getting my head round things. I haven't even learnt the names of the telly floppies yet. <laughs> the telly tubbies. Right, well, I'll be off. Where are you going? To the doctor's for a checkup. Is there something wrong? Uh, I'm supposed to be the one with the hormones. Look, if you're worried, why don't you come with me? You know I can't come with you. No. What I do know is that it was a long time ago. And besides, it's not the hospital. It's a doctor's surgery. There wouldn't be anything... To remind you. I've got things to sort out here. Okay. I'll see you later, yeah? The Feldman accounts? Just leave it there. Ready for your appraisal? Yes. Isn't Wendy scheduled to do it? Mrs. Driscoll's busy. I'm doing it. Not a problem, is there? No. Of course not. Have you got everything? Yeah. How do I look? Um, are you sure about Dad, the... it's fashion. You don't know anything. Now, remember, you've got to see... Ronnie Woodson, I know. He's expecting me, and I'm to be polite and enthusiastic at all times. I've got it. Seriously, this is a big deal for me, Emily. I work with Dr. Woodson every day, and her husband has Kindly very... agreed to let me work, so I can understand how the legal practice operates. I know. Although I kind of wish that you hadn't. But I thought you wanted to find out about the law. I do. It's just it's embarrassing that you had to set this whole thing up like I'm some kid. But you are a kid. Dad, I'm 16. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Mr. Woodson. That's something you'll get used to. The amount of oak panelling in a law firm. OK, ground rules. Firstly, confidentiality and politeness at all times. Check. And secondly, you'll be sitting in with me. Right. Shall we get started? Let's get a coffee. Is that the lot? Uh, yeah, for now. Oh, um, Mrs. Morgan said she could possibly be five minutes late. Is everything all right? What do you mean? Well, I mean, how are you feeling about your dad? Uh, look, if Mrs. Morgan's more than five minutes late, tell her to make another appointment. Uh, Wendy Driscoll, here for Dr. West. OK, would you like to take a seat? Thank you. Oh. Hello. Somebody supposed to be at home today? Yes, well, somebody forgot to take their paperwork home. Oh, so someone has had to haul themselves all the way back here with little Bracken to pick it up. <laughs> yes, but soon I may not have to drag her everywhere with me. So I'd like you to start with the filing. OK, filing. It's the cornerstone of any law firm. Really? No, I'm joking. Will we be going to the police station today? No. No, I'm not scheduled to today. Is that a problem? No, it's nothing. I just thought it would be more about, you know, crime and standing up in court and stuff. Well, you can't be run for with the baby on your first day. Who? Look, I may be able to uh, let you sit in on a couple of sessions if, if the clients agree. Yeah. <whistles> Hello. Um, yeah, put them through. Hello, Ronnie Woodson. 
Yes, that won't be a problem. And I feel I've made great inroads with the department stores in our target area. Yesterday, I convinced the buyer at Goodman's to take on more of our mascara range than they've taken in previous seasons. And Tweedy's has taken kiss and makeup for Tunbridge's. So, overall, I'm pleased with how things are going. You've certainly had a good couple of months. Thank you. Before this golden period, why do you think you struggled? Well, I wouldn't say I struggled. But I suppose in the first few months, I was finding my feet. Building up contacts. Your sales figures were way down, weren't they? Like I say, I was new, and it was a period of adjustment. And to be honest, some of the targets I was given seemed a bit, well, a bit arbitrary. Pretty standard. But I think the main thing is my sales performance is excellent now. Unfortunately, David, we're reviewing your entire first year. And four months ago, I had to give you a warning about your performance. What? To be honest, at ten weeks, all we need to do is get you seen by a midwife at St. Phil's. I can arrange that. Are you taking folic acid? Right, uh, yes. I right, she'll want to talk to you about the pregnancy. She'll take some blood tests and screen you for infections that can affect the baby. Okay. It's all right. It's just routine. She'll talk to you about what to expect during the pregnancy. Well, that'd be really useful. It's your first, isn't it? <laughs> it's a wide-eyed wonder, give it away. It's not only that it's my first, or our first, but also neither of us ever thought about babies. I was always anti-babies from day one, and Alf never mentioned wanting any. And how do you feel now? Well, that's the weird thing. Now it's happened, I feel totally thrilled. Must be hormones. And how's Alf? Well, I think he's happy. You think? Well, to be honest, he's behaving a little oddly. It was a proper warning, David. The fact that you remember it as less than that is not my problem. It was a joke. I remember. I made a sale. You told me to pull my finger out about the targets or something, and Wendy, Mrs. Driscoll, just laughed. Did she? There is no way that was an official warning. I'm afraid it was. And it leaves me with a problem, David. Here I am with a man who only seems to pull his weight when it's near to appraisal time. A man who only meets three months' targets out of 12. The targets were too high for a new employee. A man who, at the end of the day, I can't rely on. What? I'll be grateful if you clear your desk as soon as possible. Th this is a joke. No. I'll pay you to the end of the week. Thank you for the efforts you've put in over the last few months. I'm sure you'll find a more suitable position somewhere else. Well, I think the things you've described mean that Alf is finding fatherhood a bit of a shock to the system. Oh, he's never been like this before. He's never even shown these emotions. Well, it's like you said. Neither of you planned this. Maybe it's a bigger adjustment for him. Mm, I suppose. Is that why he isn't here today? No. There's a whole other thing. His first wife, Patricia, died in hospital. She had a terminal illness, and he was with her right until the end, and he hasn't been able to go for so much as a checkup since. And for one thing, it means I have to go for all these appointments on my own. Well, I hope he conquers the fear, because it would be a real shame for him to miss out on the good times ahead. Before we start, Mr. Sen, I'd like to check that it's OK for Emily to sit in and observe. She's here in work experience, and obviously it goes without saying, but she'll treat everything with confidentiality. OK. So, I understand you'd like to pursue a case of unfair dismissal? Against Driscoll Cosmetics, yes. And uh, when were you dismissed? Well? Well, uh, Ronnie and I have been talking near off all weekend, and we've come to a decision about Bracken's care. And? And, well, it's a big decision, well, you know, big for us. Um, but we've decided to try Bracken in a nursery. Wow. Yeah, are you sure you're okay with that? Well, I mean, it's a big step, but good on you. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure we'll feel guilty, you know, leaving her for the first time. I'm 
Just glad she's not big enough to press her little face against the window as we're driving off. <laughs> but, you know, she's, she's nearly one now, so it'll probably do some good to mix with some other kids. Well, I hope it all works out. It will. So, what chance do you think I've got? Unfair dismissal can be tough to prove. Uh, the key issues are whether you realised that you weren't matching up to the performance that they wanted. Did Alf Driscoll put anything in writing? I'm so sorry. It's OK. Let me get you some. There are some tissues on the side. You could get them. Yes. It's OK. Um, where were we? Alf Driscoll, whether there was anything in writing. Well, there should have been. The first I heard was when I got fired. Um, should I... do you... I think it might... Give be... the tissues to Mr. Hussain. Um, and the sales targets, were they the same for all the sales? I don't know. Well, we need to find out, because if you were singled out some way, that definitely helps your claim. My mum may only be working part-time. I mean, you'll probably really enjoy the nursery, hmm? There'll be, uh, stories and other children to play with, and you'll all have a nap together. And you'll be able to do some painting and drawing and... Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no, you're all right. I was just feeling guilty. <laughs> you know, I felt this bad, and I haven't even found a nursery yet. No, I know exactly what you're going through. I felt the same when I had to leave Taran for the first time. I could hardly walk down the path. Mm. But then I suppose I was only leaving him with family. Family? Mm. Yeah, but he was still going to a strange place when he was just as young as Bracken, wasn't he? No, no, actually, he was four. I was with him every day up till then. Remember to never get a job as a Samaritan, won't you? What? Listen, George. Main thing is that Bracken will probably love nursery. You never know. She might even flourish there. Yeah, I suppose. You've got to realise what's best for her and just do it. You think? Absolutely. This whole middle-class mum guilt thing isn't helping anyone. Not you, not Bracken, and not us that have got to listen to it all. Yeah? Such reassurance, they're going to be so helpful. Where's David? He's gone. Well, it's a bit early for lunch, isn't it? Hey, losing control of his staff, Alf Driscoll. No, he's gone. What? I had to let him go. Have you got me the piece in file? How efficient am I? Yeah, did you get the coffee stain out of the document? Uh, nearly. Nearly? Well, uh, I used a little bit too much water, but it's fine, it's drying on the radiator. Now, I'm going into town for a meeting and then I'm going to the Icon Bar for lunch. Well, what about my lunch? Well, that's up to you. You can have yours when I get back. I won't be long. What do you think you're doing? I want a list of the sales targets for the whole team. Do you now? What's going on, Alf? The information may form part of the case for my employment tribunal. Employment tribunal? That's very impressive, but totally fruitless. David, what's going on? Well, I'm seeing a solicitor at Riley Lynch. He doesn't seem to think it's fruitless. What do I care? I want the figures. I don't have them written down. Sorry. There's nothing written down. That's all the proof I need. For what? To take you to the cleaners. What is wrong with you? It's my company. But you heard him. He's going to sue us. Let him try. Well, if you won't tell me what's going on, and if you won't do anything to stop this, then I will. We can't lose David. Looking slightly scruffy. I'm sorry. Are you Mr. Woodson? Your assistant, Emily, is it? She described you. I told you where to find her. Look, I understand that you're representing David Hussain, one of my employees, in an unfair dismissal claim. Yeah, up to and including. If it goes as far as an appointment, I'll be. Hopefully, not be true. Well, 
It is. Well, I can't really talk to you because I'm acting for David and that would be a conflict of interest. I can recommend a solicitor for you. Look, I'm happy to talk to you without representation. I want to stop this thing going to a tribunal and try and understand my husband's stupid behaviour. You know, we should be happier than we've ever been, but since I found out I was pregnant, he's changed and he's getting worse every day. I'm sorry, I do law, not marriage guidance. <sighs> I'm sorry. Looks like I was wrong about David. This is the one you've taken up with. What are you talking about? Mr. Woodson's a solicitor. Signing the divorce papers already. What, so you and him get to go off into the sunset with your baby and my business? Is that it? You followed me here because you think I'm having an affair. Is that what this is all about? The sacking, the strange behaviour? It's all been about this. I'm oh, sorry, can someone explain to me what's going on? Because I just came in for a bit of peace and quiet and a sandwich. When you love someone and they die, do you know how long it takes to own up to someone else? You don't want to risk it. Scared you're going to get hurt if you trust again. Don't you trust me? I did until about ten weeks ago. Neither of us planned this baby, but it's wonderful that it's happened. Wonderful. It's a miracle. Ow, wait. What's this all about? What's this all about? I can't have children. It's your baby, Alf. How can you just trust me like this? Patricia made it clear we couldn't have children. She told me. And she told me it was my fault we couldn't. Why didn't you tell me? Because you never wanted kids, so I never had to say anything. All this. All this because of some comment your wife made years ago. Not just a comment. I had a test. You were wrong. The test must have been wrong. Patricia read it out. Is she a doctor all of a sudden? the results. What? Did you see them? No. She came back from St. Phil's. We both had tests. She came back and she told me. It was just before she got ill. And because of the illness, you didn't pursue it? I didn't need to see a doctor. I trusted Patricia. Why would she lie? Why would I lie? Found out why David got sacked. Uh, yogurt. What? Um, I didn't have a lunch break, and all I had was this yogurt. And as I opened it, it kind of exploded all in my bag and on the desk. And now I don't even have that, and I'm absolutely starving. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. It's part of the job. It's not part of your job. You had a lunch break. I said you could have yours when I got back, and now I'm back. And why did you tell that woman where she could find me? What happened to taking a message? She didn't want to leave a message. That, it's, that's just not professional, Emily. This is a business, not a playground. Now, where are David Hussain's notes? Which one of us do you trust? Me or Patricia? One of us must be lying. She wouldn't. Well, she was too perfect to lie, wasn't she? Don't. Do you know what it's like trying to live up to her? Trying to fill those perfect shoes, hearing you talk in a reverential whisper when you say her name. Please. She's gone, Alf. And I might be soon. Why would she lie? Well, Patricia got it wrong. Perhaps she was too embarrassed to admit it was she that had a problem and not you. And perhaps because of the treatment she couldn't have kids and she hid it from you. There could be any number of reasons. Look, you've got to decide who you trust more. Her or me. Maybe I should have another test. Well, if you need proof, then that's it. If we don't have trust... We don't have anything. There were no formal sales targets. Alf Driscoll just made them up. Meaning 
He could set any unrealistic goals he wanted, and I'd have no way of checking what the other salespeople had. Or so he thought. What do you mean? I've got these. One of them is an email from Alf to me listing my targets for last month. The other is an email to one of the other sales guys listing his targets. Yeah, that's a big difference. Uh, there have been some other developments as well. Um, Wendy Driscoll came to see me. She's very keen for this not to go to court. Yeah, she was so keen. She even came at lunch time. OK, I'm happy to talk, but Alf had better have an apology and his checkbook ready. All right, but as your legal advisor, I should tell you that your case against Driscoll's is stronger than you realised. I know the reason why you were sacked, why Alf wanted you out. Um, perhaps you could leave us alone a moment, please, Emily. Why? Emily. I'm sorry. Um, it seems that the sacking arose from a, a personal matter between Wendy and Alf, and you just happened to get caught in the middle. What kind of personal matter? Alf thought that you were the father of the baby. What? Yeah, well, it strengthens your case. Now it has elements of sexual discrimination as well. After all, Alf would never sack a female employee in suspicion of getting his wife pregnant. I'll be in touch, Mr. Hussain. Thank you. Why, why did you send me out? You have to ask. Your behavior was inappropriate. But I was beginning to learn something, finally. After spending all day like a dog's body doing all the rubbish jobs, you know, I'm quite surprised that you didn't send me out for sandwiches. I've had enough, Emily. I can't keep fighting you at every turn. What are you doing? Calling your dad to come and fetch you. Do what you like. Your last appointment was in 1986. You've no idea how difficult it is for me to be here, Doctor. I just want to have a fertility test. First of all, Mr. Driscoll, I must stress how important it is for you to attend surgery more than once every 20 years. I know, please. OK. I can arrange for a sperm test. It'll tell us your sperm count and how motile they are. In other words, how able they are to move. Mr. Driscoll. How was it? A shock. I'd forgotten how much doctors like to lecture you. I'm glad you conquered your fear. But I don't want to know what happened. Like I say, it isn't relevant what the test said. Just the fact you needed to have it was enough. Goodbye, Alf. Wait. You may like the result, Alf, but it means nothing to me. It's your baby. I'm glad you realise that now. I didn't have the test. I thought about what you said. I didn't have the test. You really didn't have it? You've got to trust me, too. No, it's not. I've had enough. I've been talked down to all day. I've made cups of tea. I've done lots of filing. I've listened to people drone on about child custody and divorce. I wonder I didn't die of boredom. And before you say anything, yes, I did try and enjoy myself. You've got to give things more time than this. Why? Because people put themselves out for you. People are always putting themselves out for you. You? Yes. Ted, you only did this so you could look good in front of your new mate. I arranged it because you were interested in law. You're right. I was interested in law. But you know something? I've realised I don't want to do it now. But I... Thanks for that, Dad. Emily. <sighs> Emily.
Belize facing a day from hell as Honey disappears from hospital in EastEnders tonight at 8 here on BBC One. Next this afternoon, a girl has seen too much and needs Dr Sloan's protection in Diagnosis Murder.